The thing about drums, ultimately, it was completely easy to do to me. It was like go, it was like a duck jumping in the pond. Well, what influenced me about deepening my path with drums was just the evolution of listening to music. It made me want to experiment more with the way that I approach the drum set, as opposed to just sitting down and trying to be Buddy Rich or Ringo or whatever. It, it became more about, well, why, you know, why is, why does Canned Heat sound the way they do? And why does Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young sound, you know, what, what are the elements about that? From, a, from the foundational point of view. What's driving all that? And, and I, I just, I, by osmosis, I just listen and then would put the headphones on and blast away until I sort of started getting my head around it. There was a guy, God rest his soul, his name was Jack Holder. And he found me in, I, I, I really don't remember specifically how it happened, but I had, was in a garage band playing somewhere he, in some joint in Midtown Memphis. He saw us playing and approached me about replacing their drummer that had uh, left the band. And I met Joe Walsh via my wife's girlfriend who was dating him at the time and he was coming and going to Memphis. And one night in the wee hours of the night, we were all out hanging out, and the next thing we know, uh, we're, we're back at the recording studio that belonged to my wife and, and her then husband. And we just started jamming. And then two days later, he goes, hey man, you wanna go with me? And, and it was like, it was a, a KLOS at Shoreline Amphitheater. It was a big radio festival thing going on there. Sold out, 20 plus thousand people, and we literally, we, well, we were supposed to rehearse. We never did, you know, it never happened. So literally my first gig with Joe Walsh was called in front of 20,000 people in Shoreline Amphitheater, <laughs> you know? And so that took me to yet a whole nother place that I had never experienced before. And then it was kind of really no looking back at that point. It just word travels however it does. And I guess I was able to play well enough to get enough people's attention to start giving me shots to play with. But the big difference between then and where we are now is the thing that I see with a lot of young guys is that they don't have the frame of reference for performance-based playing. Uh, we're Pro Tools driven now, we're not tape driven. So. Pro Tools is, is ultimately forgiving. If you make a mistake, just go back and fix it. Or if you want to do another take, pro, you know, playlist it. And you can do as many playlists as you want, and we'll just comp your drum performance later, or, we can, or whatever you're playing, whatever instrument it is. Well, back when I was doing this originally on tape, what are you talking about? You know, there, there was none of that. You know, it was like, you get can take. You start the song and you play it all the way to the end of the song and then we'll decide whether or not we've got a take, you know. And it's the body of it and the way all of that feels that generated what I think are some of our greatest performances because they literally were performances, you know. Now, if you listen to contemporary radio, it's so gridded out and so defined that in a way, it's perfect to listen to, it's perfect sonically, everything's perfect, but it's got no thing, you know, it doesn't, there's something missing, you know. My room is set up where the console and the kit and whoever else is recording with me at the time, or just me, we're all together in the same room, you know, headphones are on. Well, we can't run speakers wide open, but but with cans on, we're all good right here in this in this in this square room. I got onto the Argosy Halo system. Well, I, it was when I saw the Halo disc, I just saw this is this is perfect for for my system for my room. This, the size of it, 
the shape of it, the way the workflow is going to lay out, uh, the prototype that I saw, I just knew immediately as soon as I saw it, it's like, that's right, that's it, you know? And, and, and the footprint is small. You know, it's it, 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 which is a wonderful thing for a space like mine. And I've got a system now that I can sit at behind that desk and I don't get physically uncomfortable by being there for any length of time. That I could not say was the case with the previous desk I had in here. If somebody is asking me about, about the Halo desk as a as an alternative or a solution to their to their space, I, without hesitation, I would say get it, just get it. It's the pricing of it is right, the the, the way it's laid out, what you can do with it. It's 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 really 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 strong stuff, and it's a terrific tool for everybody that's in this business.